In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Good people, I'm sure you're well on this day, Thursday, the 28th day of April, in the year of our Lord and Savior, 2022. We are gradually coming to the end of this month, and we are thanking God for the gift of um, our life, and for the gift of this month, the gift of each other. This week, as we said, it is the week of our children opening school. And therefore, for those of you, our sons and daughters who are going to back to school today, I'm praying for your safe journey. I'm praying for your safe stay in school. It shall be well. Please go. Leave us behind as we, as we pray for you. Today, I want to share with you in the series of faith, faith development, how to follow God's plan for our life. This is something that we intimated yesterday. How can we follow God's plan for our life? Step number one, be in prayer and live in prayer. Being in prayer and living in prayer is different from being prayerful. The first one is like a lifestyle, being in prayer. It is where every aspect of our life belongs to God, guided by God, directed by God, sustained by God. Now you know. Step number two, be actively in reading and studying the Bible. Actively. <clears throat> is the word. Why do we say actively? Because sometimes we read the, wa the word of God selectively. Other times we wait until maybe when you go for mass or for worship and then somebody reads the word for us. So it is others who read for us. Here we must be intentional. Purposing to read the word of God. <clears throat> Purposing to not only read, but also to be guided. To be guided. That is where we talk about studying the word of God. And I'm sure I have talked about this so many other times. Eh? About uh, biblical study or Bible study if you like. Step number three. Follow the commands that he has put in your heart. God puts commands in our heart. The reason why we talk about discernment, it is for you to be able to identify what is put in our hearts by God. It is one thing to go to church and hear the sermon from whoever is delivering it. And it is another thing when you take time each day to devote to being in God's word. Devoting to being in God's word. Taking just a few minutes each day to read what is the word will give you a better life. In fact, we say that the best compass in life is the word of God. Because it cannot mislead us. Step number four. Seek a godly community. Now, if you are in a prayer group, and I think I have said this in the past, it is always good to ask the persons who, are, who constitute this prayer group, do they all have the intentionalities that I have? Because sometimes you can be in a prayer group, but the orientation is completely different. But when you seek a godly community, a godly community cannot mislead you. Now, why are we having so many fights and misunderstandings in our prayer groups? It is because in some of our prayer groups, we have got the wrong people. Wrong people. Wrong because they do not belong to where we belong and where we are. 
Wrong because they do not believe what we believe in. Wrong because their path of life is completely different from the path that we have taken. And I want to ask you, those of you who are on various WhatsApp prayer groups, do you know the members? What was the original intention of that grouping? Now, this is what happens. Allow me to show you how a prayer group can mutate to be a group that will eventually get you out of church and other times out of God's um, heart. You have been meeting for prayers. Purely for worship. Purely for worship. Slowly by slowly, you now start getting nosy on who relates with who. That lady is she married? That man is he married? And that lady, she's moving around with who? Now, that is not your business. Remember, you came together to grow each other's faith. Unless there is something wrong happening. But when you start being a bit petty <coughs> on who is the girlfriend of who, a boyfriend of who, other things, that is now a sure way to start now the process of disintegration. Step number three, and this is almost in various of our groups. You start some funny contributions. I'm calling them funny because they are always dubious. Contributing money that is never accounted for. We see that we are going to some prayer to some to, to some to some shrine for prayers. So everyone everyone removes a thousand. Or the worst. The worst is when we start something like a merry go round. So every time we, we meet for prayers, we give some money, and then that some money we give one of our members. There's something wrong there. If you introduce money in a prayer group, and money was not the primary intention, that prayer group will die. For sure. And I can tell you this for a fact. It was a prayer group. Now it has mutated into a charmer or um, a merry-go-round kind of a formation. What happens? Because some people are very dishonest, somebody receives money. They stop coming to church. Maybe it is genuine. Maybe it is genuine. That's why they don't come to church. They don't congregate for those prayers. Being human and being who we are, how would you think? You think that Mama so and so does not come to our prayer group because she knows that she owes money. After she got her turn, she stopped coming. And a group that would not have died immediately disintegration starts. It becomes disintegrated and eventually it dies. That is sad. Sad. If you are in a prayer group and you are perpetually uh, contributing money for every, everything you do, you contribute money. Somebody is sick, we contribute money. So and so is dead, we contribute money. So and so is uh, being uh, remembered, we contribute money. So and so has an anniversary of the ancestors, we contribute money. So and so is pregnant, we contribute money. So and so is getting married, we contribute money. So and so is getting ordained, we contribute money. So and so is coughing, we contribute money. Uh, so and so, man, no, no, please, no, please, no, please. No, please, no. <laughs> you cannot turn a prayer group into a, a contribution suckers. No, no, please, no, please. The moment you divert the original intention of that group, it is the day you kill that group. And it is so sad. Very, very sad. 
And uh, finally, number five, obey the truth. Know the truth and obey the truth. As Father C.K. tells us, be a missionary of truth. Be a missionary of truth. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do have a productive Thursday.